So here are some other strange alcohols with some little twists in them. So uh, if your teacher is just trying to trick you, you won't be after you see these ones right here for alcohols. Okay, now take a look. This one's kind of complex because what we've got in it is a triple bond and an alcohol group there. Well, the OH or alcohol group, the hydroxyl group, takes precedence over the triple bond. So what we do is, this is going to be an alcohol, but it's got an, it's got an ine in it, and we're going to end it with an ine all kind of an ending. So um, the alcohol here, it takes precedence, so wherever end, whichever end it's closest to is where we start. So it's going to be a primary alcohol here, so we're going to go in this direction here to name this alcohol going carbon number one here, right? Carbon number one, and then two, three, four, five, and six. Now look at that again. Now what did I just do? It looked kind of strange. There's a triple bond here, and a shape around the triple bond is a linear shape. So at the end of the triple bonds, there are carbons here and here, and then it goes linear to these other carbons. So when you see a straight line and it's got a triple bond in it, there's actually four carbons in that line. Two at either end of the triple bond, because you don't put bends where triple bonds are, and then two at either end here. Wow. So again, we've got, this is going to be, this is an O uh, that's attached to the first C. Second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. So that is going to be a hex. So it's a, it's a hex and all, but it's got an ein in it. Oh, man. So it's a hexan, and then, or is it hexan? It's going to be a hex ein. Where's the ein? The ein is at the one, two, the second carbon in. So it's going to be a hex, <laughs> a hex two ein, and then where are we going? There's an all at that first carbon, so it's a one all. And as strange and weird as that one is right there, the name is hex two ein one all. The triple bonds at the second carbon, three, four, five, six in total, and then you've got the all at the first carbon. Hex two I'm one all. <sighs> okay, now this one right here, a little bit simpler, but there's two alls. All right, so how do we name something like that? One, two, three, four, five looks like the longest chain, but we're not going to start at that end, and this is why, because if you count this as kind of a branch here, that hydroxyl here, you're going to have branches at the 2 and the 3, 3 instead of the 3, 3 and the 4, right? So, we're going to have here two alls, di all. So how are we going to, and there's a methyl group on here as well, right? So again, it's a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is the longest chain, so that's a pentane. So it's a pent. Now, I'm going to keep the E on here because the all is, uh, the diol has a D there, and so we can keep this here. We don't go pent an and then a D, even though there are numbers in the way. So watch. It's going to be a pentane. Where are the alls? At the two and the three. Two, three, diol. Where was that methyl? At the three. So it's three methyl. Pentane 2, 3, diol. Wow. Okay. And uh, just to, uh, to, to uh, uh, remind you, that OH is attached to a carbon here, which is attached to three other carbons. This is a tertiary location for the alcohol group. This one, since this carbon here is attached to two others that the OH is attached to, that's going to be a secondary location. Both in that same molecule, a secondary and a tertiary location. Yeah. What's this one called? Well, it sounds really simple, doesn't it? It's going to be a benzene ring, so you're going to just go say, well, it's a benzenol. No, that's not what it's called. Remember that a benzene ring, when it's attached to the middle of a chain, is called a phenol group. Well, since the OH takes precedence over the phenol here, or the, or the benzene, the benzene becomes a phen, like a branch, but it's got an all at the end. So instead of saying benzenol, which sounds kind of normal, this is really 
phenol. That's the name of it. Now, I wanted to throw something else at you just in case there was a little trick. And it's not an alcohol, but I thought you'd appreciate knowing this one. And it's this. Let's say we've got this instead, right here. All right. Now, what are we going to name something like that that's got a double bond in it and a triple bond? Well, here's the weird, tricky thing about this. And I know this sounds strange because, you know, you got a single bond, you got a double bond. What takes precedence? A double bond. So you got a triple bond and a double bond. So what takes precedence? So you'd say the triple bond. No, the double bond takes precedence in terms of its number location, but the ein part, the triple bond part, gets named last, almost like it's supposed to have precedence. It's just weird. I don't get it, but here's how it works. So, We've got a double bond here, and the double bond is at the second carbon, so that's a 2. And the triple bond's at the, since you count this way, right? 1, 2, 3, 4. So the triple bond's at the 4, 5, 6, 7 carbons long. So in this 7 carbon, which is a, a hex, we are going to say that there's a double bond at the 2. So, because we got to count where the double bond is closest to, that takes precedence instead of going where the triple bond would be closest to, which would be at this direction, at the 3. No, it's not. It's at the 2. The double bond's at the 2, so it's a hex 2 in. Now, where's the triple bond? At the 4. So, it's a 4 ein. So, the double bond takes precedence, but the ein still gets named last. Sorry. <laughs> 